2017, filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson made a mock documentary about the life of a porn film star. Ten years and $15 million later, Anderson's project has become Boogie Nights. One, two, three. Did he say anything? Boogie Nights is being compared to films by Martin Scorsese, Robert Altman, and Quentin Tarantino, and was called the most seductive cautionary tale ever made by The New Yorker. Joining me now, filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson, and I am pleased to have him here to talk about this film and an extraordinary uh, attention being devoted to an independent film. Welcome. Thank Glad you. To have you here. Why 10 years between the time that you made that little documentary, which was about 30 minutes, as I remember? Yeah. And, and, and this completion. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, I kept playing with it, um, you know, and, 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 um, I, I wrote it after doing the short film. I wrote it as a, a full length sort of documentary, taking that kind of spinal tap approach, right, you right. know. But by the time I sort of finished that, um, that format had kind of been worn out and done many times, and, and I kind of realized I was really just sort of blatantly ripping off this spinal tap thing, <laughs> and I gotta sort of find a new way to do this. and. In the meantime, I'd written my first movie, uh, which is called Heart Eight, and right. and then just kind of um, it was finally called Heart Eight. Was finally called Heart Eight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wink. Those of us who love it called it Sydney. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> God, it's good to be here. I feel comfortable. <laughs> um, you know, and I don't know. Somewhere in t in uh, ten years, two hours was added <laughs> you know, on top of the half hour. Yeah. And I just kind of figured, well, the way to do this is just kind of go nuts and just make it straight narrative but really kind of just start writing and uh, wrote 300 pages of stuff and eventually had a shooting script of 186 pages casting yeah the best the the, the best part casting and writing are kind of the same thing to me you know because I write parts for actors that are my friends mm -hmm. or actors that I that I don't know that I really want to work with like Julianne Moore is someone whose work I just loved, you know, and I, I wrote this part for her, but I didn't know her, but um, it was great to give it to her and say, I, this is for you, you know, and she said yes. And John Riley and Phil Hoffman and Philip Baker Hall and uh, uh, Bob Ridgely, a lot of the actors in the movie are, are, are real good friends of mine, and it's great to 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 um, write parts for them because, you, you know, they're my friends and I watch them kind of suffer in Hollywood, you know, not being uh, able to play parts that they should, you know, if, they, if, they're, if they're good at playing the white trash hillbilly, they get the white trash hillbilly parts, you right. know, forever, and I can, go, I can go to them and say, so what, do you, what kind of part do you want to play, you know, and say, well, I want to do something other than the stuff they're offering me, you know, so it's nice to, to do that, you know. What about the lead? Marky? Yeah. Um, Not the first choice. No, he wasn't. Um, well, he is now. No, of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to look back and That's say, right. I knew this I all knew along. All along. <laughs> yeah. I knew this. I wrote it for him. I knew it would be, he'd That's own right. the part. That's right. I knew all this would happen for him. He's an interesting guy. He came by and we did a yeah. conversation. He's a very interesting guy. He's smart and yeah. smooth and, 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 and. Not at all like you imagine. No. No, because of all the because of all that stuff yeah. there before, you know. And it was funny because when I sat down with him, well, I, he wasn't the first choice. I had thought of him a couple times because I'd liked him in the Basketball Diaries. Yeah. And the first choice was Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. Leonardo eventually decided to do the Titanic, and um, so I went to Mark, you know, and sat down with him. But did Leonardo recommend Mark? He did actually. I, I mean, I, I had Mark in the back of my head. My casting director was really saying, Mark, you great, you know, and my, and my producer was saying, Mark's great, and Leo said, meet Mark, you know. Not that I had to be convinced, but, um, but I actually really wanted Leo, you know, and Leo said, I'm going to do the Titanic, meet Mark. So I sat down with meet with Mark, and he talked about this early stuff, it was kind of funny, because we sat down, and I said, so, you know, have you read the script? And he said, well, to be honest, I've only, I've only read 30 pages, and I thought, who is this jerk, you know, <laughs> yes. hotshot guy who's only read 30 yeah. pages, and he said, listen, I love these 30 pages, and I know I'm going to love the rest of it, but I just want to make sure before I really fall in love with this and, and, and want to do it, I want to make sure you don't want me because I'm the guy who will get in his underwear, you know? Yeah. Because, I, you know, people were offering him stuff like that, like right. come rap in a movie, come be the underwear guy in a movie, you know? And I said, I don't know anything about that. I, I want you because I saw you in the Basketball Diaries, you know, and I want to hear what you have to say about this script. You saw some acting ability in the Basketball Diaries. Yeah. 
he was great, you know. Um, Nothing against Leo, but he stole a movie from Leo. You know, he was so great. <laughs> and why didn't you go to him first? Yeah, I know. I might ask. I just can't. I don't know. <laughs> Stuck on the big star, you yeah. know. Um, he's he's not he's not, you know, unlike most of the other actors in the movie, he's not a trained actor. You know, it's just this this thing of talent. It's just this raw, big ball, glowing ball of talent, and he's his instincts are always. Does great. that present a different challenge than it? say working with someone who who comes in more than just raw talent who comes in with some acting craft that they have incorporated into their experience do you do it differently do you no. work differently no no to tell you the truth no because you know a good actor is a good actor and and you know back to your question of casting that's and it's the old cliche that's 99% yeah, right. it, it it really it is it really is yeah I mean, I, I don't have a job as, as a director to the actors. I, I, that's my theory, is that my job to them is as a writer. It's like, write them a good part, do my job there. And write then as a good a part, choose the right person to play it. Exactly. And that's, then I will, I, I will have done my job. As a director, it's just like keeping your sense of humor and every once in a while reminding them to keep it simple, you know. But it's just being a fan as a director. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Burt Reynolds. He's great, you know. He's he's Bert, and yeah. again, not the first choice. No, not the first. well. You know what? He was the first person that I had thought of when I was writing it. I don't think you can write a movie about, you know, seventies porn and a character right. named Jack Horner, who's the sort of father figure, without thinking of Burt Reynolds. Right. You know. Um, but you thought about Warren Beatty. I did. Well, Warren Warren called me up and and. I think what I eventually I started to figure out was that Warren really wanted to play Dirk Diggler. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I yes. said, you don't really want to play Jack, or you want to be the kid in this movie. He said, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. said, well, so yeah, I talked with him for a little while about it. But now, do you think he seriously thought about making this? Yeah, I do. I do. I think he really liked the script. You know, and uh, and why didn't he do it then? You know, you'd have to ask him. I think it's funny because when he saw the movie, um, and, and he called me and said, you know, that he really loved it, and he said, um, he said that it, it it fulfilled all of his concerns. That all of his concerns and why he didn't do the movie, which was his, his concerns about the morality and the sort of the sort of moral center of the movie, that he he just said he admitted that he wasn't able to really see in the script. And I guess I wasn't able some, to communicate to him through talking with him. What was that issue for you as a director, the morality of the film? Because a lot of other people would have thought the same thing, that he was bothered by. Right. How did you address that? I mean, what did you as a filmmaker do to have this be considered not just some movie about pornography, but right. something more? Something that had the same kind of buzz that Pulp Fiction does. Right. You mean in, 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 in convincing well, whatever the it was actor, that bothered what was it that bothered Warren, Warren in the end? I think I think what he might have been looking for, which which maybe some other people were looking for, was was a clear kind of moment uh, or a, a clear moment when someone stands up and says what we are doing is wrong, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and, some much more blatant right, much more right. dramatic clear, precise. Yeah, exactly. Making porn films this way is not right. Right. Yeah, I mean I think there was something that I was upfront with um, the actors about and maybe you know uh, was was my confusion about the issue and 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 saying that that, that there's a there's a version of this movie that is confused and then and then has to be okay and then I don't you know I, I support this as much as it really kind of turns me off and I'm confused about it and 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 we have points to make, you know, within this movie that we can put a period at the end of, but it's okay to be elliptical about something if we are confused, you know? When you put it together, is there a sense you had something special when you, when did you first know that this was, had a chance? Um, it felt so good when we were making it, you know? Like we were having so much fun and, uh, and it really felt nice. It really did. And um, but I think that that kind of the excitement that we had um, probably cautioned us in, in thinking that 
it's too good a time and we're too excited about this. I, this is probably like the most expensive home movie ever made for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we'll really like it, you yeah. know, when we watch our own videos of yeah. it. But certainly something happened. Something started to swell. I think that there was, a, there was a sort of buzz within kind of Hollywood, you know, people that had read the script that were either really excited about it or, or really had a big question mark yeah. about it. Like, will they pull that off? Exactly what, right. Will they, they pull it off? Because yeah. they've got a good script. Right. But we've seen good scripts go down the tube before. Right. right. You know, we've seen directors not be able to take the material they have and do something with it. Right. You know, and, and you hadn't been tested that much. Right. And you put these actors together and Reynolds was not coming off of a brilliant right. time. Right. And then many, many believe this might do something for his career in a significant way. Right. And same with Mark though too. I mean it, I think they the were not the first big stop for him. Yeah, exactly. For those who are watching this and have not seen the movie, what's the story? What are we looking? What's this movie about? Um, the people who make porn movies and what happens to them in the 70s? Yeah. It's funny because you say that, you know, and, 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 and some people will sort of run for the hills. Right. You know, they hear porn, they run for the hills, and you want to kind of stop and say, well, no. It's sort of about the sort of uh, the need to kind of create the surrogate family within this world. And then they really roll their eyes and they go, well, you know, <laughs> you're pulling my, you know, yeah, right. screw you. you I know? don't, <laughs> don't want to hear about surrogate yeah, families. Yeah, and, and, then, and then you sort of, you know, you just get in this kind of tangled web, you know. It's kind of like the... Uh, the, the rock star who introduces the song before he sings it, like, this is a song about love and redemption, and then you're just like, sing the song, just sing the song. <laughs> Roll tape, here is our first clip, our second clip from Boogie Nights. <laughs> She's a wonderful mother, you know. She's a mother to all those who need love. All those who need love. All those what? All those who need love. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea to put this, the rollerblades on the... The roller uh, skates yeah. there on, on Roller Girl. Right. You gonna take credit for that, or just yeah, no, I'm it? I'm gonna take credit for it. I, I'm just I'm just wondering if I should tell the truth on how I. I no, come on, tell us. There's, there, there, um, I went to the Sundance Lab, actually, and uh, you know to work on my first movie, right. and it's really kind of great up there. And you go and you screen movies and stuff. And there's a wonderful guy up there who's a projectionist that I kind of befriended. And I found out that Robert Redford sort of had a stash of, of, of movies, you know, like he had a sort of pristine print of The Chase and a, of The Hit, this right. Stephen Frears movie. And it turned out the projectionist had a, had a porno movie. So I would sort of have these late night screenings up at the lab, you know, like after everybody went to sleep, you know, we'd all come down and go down. And <laughs> you we'd invite screen. all your friends over right. in the middle of the night. And we'd watch. be down there in the middle of the night. Go he into was Redford's great. vault and go watch his films. Go into Redford's films. vault, you know, break in. I, I, you know, he's going to kill me, but... but um, I hope he's watching. Yeah, break in, you know, and kind of screen these movies and you know went through all the good stuff the wizard of oz you know the last reel of the wizard of oz and the chase and got to this porno movie where it was this just this girl roller skating around and stopping and looking in windows you know and she'd watch a couple have sex and then roller skate to the next and and i just you know, well, roller see, girl is born roller girl is born <laughs> you know and also too it's i think the name because when you when you write uh you know like the guy that the uh the hot dog vendor is hot dog vendor do you know what I mean? Yeah. You just write hot dog vendor. I think I don't think I didn't have a name. You know, it was just Roller Girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'll, maybe I'll, I'll figure a name out later. It just became uh, Roller Girl. Roll tape. Here is Roller Girl in action. I miss my tape. I love him, Roller Girl. You know, I mean, I really love the stupid trick. <laughs> I love you, Mom. A couple of things about this: the the what happens to Dirk. Yeah. I mean. Um. Dirk, uh, you know, uh, c cocaine, and uh, you know, just loses it. Loses it, you know. Uh, the, the, in the, you know, his ego uh, happens, you know, and cocaine, and you know, he's become a big time movie star, you know. How much of this is? What was the name of the John John Holmes bio? Uh, what was it? Who, who was the guy? There, there was a there was a book written about Holmes. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a great Rolling Stone article uh, written, uh, and I don't, but I don't well, okay, know what what's the official. Okay, what's it type? Uh, it was something about Wonderland, because it was the Wonderland murders. That In was other words, did you base this on any original material? Uh, some, some stuff was taken, plucked from his life. You know. Uh, uh, Original material meaning. Yeah, right. So, I mean, you, you, in other words, did the script that you wrote, right, you know, come from in a sense did, were you informed by, you know, sort of stories of porn stars who yes. sort of had gone to the top, yeah, and then had lost it because of addiction, because of ego, because of yeah. 
I mean, certainly John Holmes and the story of Shauna Grant and, right. uh, you know, pieces of real porn stars' lives like Seika, you know, uh, Veronica Hart, maybe to the... Uh, the amber character and, and sure plucked pieces but but I also think I just I plucked as many pieces from many you know so-called legitimate celebrities you know um, movie stars you know who you've seen rise and fall and go through that you know essentially this sort of story is any any of the Busby Berkeley backstage musicals you know yeah. the kid with the dream and the rise and the fall and all of that so um, but yeah we certainly did pluck pieces yeah. from a couple of things that people notice about this film first of all was the opening shot yeah <laughs> Yeah, the opening shot is one of those big, fun, show-off moments where you get to, you know... Director stretches stuff. Exactly, <laughs> where you get to go, I'm directing. Yeah, this, you know? is, this is my baby. Yeah, yeah. and th I think those are okay, you know, if they're well-earned, you know. Uh, that, that one isn't earned because it's the first shot of the movie, but in some way, to me, it kind of frees the movie up, you know, and kind of goes, have fun, you know, and this is going to be a, a long, winding ride, you know. And they're really fun to do. These long, complicated tracking shots are really fun to do. There's something great. I think the actors love them. You know, there's some uh, movie acting is so sort of pieced up and chopped up. You know that they don't really get a chance. Very rarely is action called like kind of like being on stage. Action is called. You know, the curtain comes up and like three or four minutes later, their their scene happens. You know, which is kind of fun for them. You know, to really act something through and and, and let it breathe and let it happen. I read somewhere that the films you love, Nashville, yeah, Robert Altman. Yeah. Uh, Goodfellas. Yeah. Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Demme. Yeah. He's the best. David Mamet. Sure. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino's not in there, but might as well be included in that group. Or not. Uh, no, I think he's a wonderful filmmaker. I mean, I... He just didn't inform your life or your, your ambition, your desires? Not really, um, but certainly, the, you know, the success of Pulp Fiction helped a lot of people get movies made. A lot of people, you know, so in that regard, certainly. It said something new, something different, something that feels... Something special. that made a lot of money that didn't cost much and was different. And, yeah. you know, that's a big deal, you know, and that's great. I'm fascinated by you and the way you, I mean, you seem like a kid. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 27 now. Uh, and here you are 27 years old and you've got a big movie, a movie yeah. that everybody's talking about. You have wanted to do this since you were how old? Born. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember. There's only one other thing that I wanted to do and I thought I wanted to be a boxer. But that was because I saw Rocky. <laughs> yeah. And I decided, I don't think you want to be a boxer. Yeah. You want to be like Rocky? I said, I want to be like Rocky. He said, you maybe want to be an actor or a writer or a director or something like that. I said, yeah, that's right. That's what I want to do. Yeah. But you didn't really want to act at all, did you? No. You never wanted to act? No. Because uh, it's too hard. And you respect it. Yeah, I just, it's the hardest job in the whole world, I think, you know, and I, I don't know how they do it. I really don't, you know. That's why I just sit back and just let them do it. And I have too many friends who, uh, who are actors who would really kill me if I ever tried, you know. <laughs> I would really be killed. You dropped out of school mm -hmm. because all you wanted to do was to learn how to make movies. Yeah. That seems to me the only way to go, you know? I mean, I, film school was never an option. It just, it seems to me to be a waste of time and a waste of money, in all honesty, really. I mean, certainly I had a leg up in that I was born and, and bred in, in Los Angeles, where, you know, to, to get a job on a film set is, you know, just as easy as, you know, I don't know. And it, then Detroit getting a job working it, for an auto Exactly, company. exactly. Um, so, so I did have a leg up there, you know, it's just, it's always, it surrounds you. Um, but, you know, my, my, my uh, film education really came from watching other movies, you know. Um, and, and, and I think there's, um, there's a scary mentality, I think, in film schools. My, my small sort of dealing with them is, 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 is something that's really terrifying. I walked into a film class and that was, was about screenwriting. And this guy, the first the opening line was, you know, if you're here to write Terminator 2, just leave now. And I thought, well, that's terrible. There could be a kid in the corner there that wants to write Terminator 2. That's his vision. That's his movie. That's Let what he likes. It. Let him do it, you know. Yeah. And, the, and the, the mentality of film schools is we'll start out with, you know, Potemkin. <laughs> First day in class. Here's Potemkin. You know, every kid in the class is going to just fall down. You know, what do you do? It's like they should do it backwards, you know. Start yeah. with Terminator 2. And, and work backwards and sort of and, and ease into this and sort of, you know, trace the sort of Trace the heritage, you know, trace it back. Watch a Scorsese movie, which everyone sort of loves in the class and is very excited by, and trace back and go, okay, 
Here's, who's, here's who he was riffing off of. Here's these patents that he is kind of built upon, you know, and, and, and study it that way. One of the great moments of this program uh, in its six or seven year existence is Scorsese talking about Fellini. Uh. You know, and he wanted to, and he came here when Fellini died just to pay homage yeah. to Fellini. Because he was informed by Fellini the way you're informed by Scorsese. Yeah. And the way somebody who's 10 years old wanting to be you is informed by this and whatever right. movies. What do you think Scorsese and Altman and Mamet and Demi have in common? What do good filmmakers have? Just a persistence of vision. I, I think they all, they all have kept their attitudes, you know? Yeah. It doesn't seem like any of them are lazy. They just don't stop, you know? And they, they, they just don't stop. I mean, there's, there's something about, I think, all four of them that is the, the, the biggest trick, I think, is, is that they're incredibly selfish filmmakers, you know, in the best possible way. You know, they're really making themselves happy first. And it's just wonderful that it happens to also communicate to all of us and make it enjoyable to all of us. But there's a sort of, you just see them, them sort of, um, I see with each of them, you know, they're sort of raising their watermark each time and really trying to um, do different things and new things while keeping their patents. You know, I don't, you can watch any of their movies and you know, you know you're watching. It has a stamp, a signature. Exactly. Yeah. But, also, but also then frees them up to kind of make different movies. You know, for, for Scorsese to go make Age of Innocence or Demi to kind of branch out and do something like Beloved, which he's doing now. Congratulations. Thank you very it's much. It's a terrific film, and, and you're a fascinating guy. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.